is going on, everybody? Season 10, Episode 9 of Alone. We dropped from four contestants to three tonight. And I was a little, I'll be honest, I was a little surprised by our tap out of the, of the day as it ends up being Melanie. You know, we have seen her, you know, have some emotional moments through the season, but I never really thought that she was really on the verge of breaking and deciding to go go home and then all of a sudden this episode she was just done and tapped out and gone and and like that felt like it happened in rapid succession like if you had walked out of the room at the wrong time like you would have completely missed her tap out like it i don't know it was kind of we felt weird too it just felt like really rushed and i mean she's top four like she she beat the best hunter in the entire world. Well, at least in his opinion, Cade. You know, he beat, he beat, she beat some very established survivalists, some very skilled survivalists. She came fourth in this season and it was just like gone and, and done. And, and it was just, just very bizarre to me. You know, she ends up tapping because she was feeling too alone she was homesick because I got the impression that she still had food that she still had stuff she would gathered she had not run out of out of gathered food like yes she struck out at fishing uh you know she did all of her hunting for the season this episode which was one mouse uh but you know she had been gathering enormous amounts of, of food or at least it seemed like that when we were actually getting shown and I would be very interested to know like how much food did she leave behind when she tapped out because I bet it was more than what Mikey has you know I, be, I bet that calorie wise you know it wasn't too far behind what Alan's sitting on but uh, I really expected her to go right to the last breath but that ends up not being the case melanie taps out and she is she gets fourth place still pretty 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 good for a season of alone is better than any of us could do uh uh but i really i thought she'd push it a little further moving on our top three let's start with alan um we see him carving some blunt arrows. Uh, he's worried about losing arrows while hunting grouse. Um, the hunting doesn't go very well. I kind of thought that Alan was going to transition a little more to hunting right now. But over the course of the episode, kind of feels like he's just going to stick to fishing. You know, I thought that right now he might have a period of time where he'd kind of be forced off the lake. And into the woods to do do some more hunting but you know we saw him fishing we saw him with the gill net he catch caught his first fish in the gill net of the season something i did not realize uh gets a fish in his gill net on his birthday a nice little birthday fish ended the episode with him firing off a celebratory bear bang uh which was was pretty entertaining um one interesting thing that we got from Alan this episode is that he said that he thinks he has food up till day 55 and that was before he caught this white fish which he said was the largest fish he caught for, of the season and I think he was he was been stretching most fish for he said kind of one fish equals two more days out here and if that's the largest fish he's caught you know that fish probably equals three or four days out here so you know he's probably thinking that he can push till day 60 and now and maybe starve till day 65 is kind of the threshold for where where he's projecting himself to go this season and that's without that's with the assumption that he catches no more food you know also as the episode progressed he kind of makes the decision that he's going to start preserving more calories and i think that was part of the the decision to maybe maybe not do so much hunting you know we saw him go out and try the hunting strike out uh but it burns a lot of calories you're out there you're walking around for 
who knows how long. You may or may not get something. If you do get something, it might not even cover the calories that you spent to get it. So he's gonna, he's just gonna be laying low a little bit more, going out doing a little bit of fishing or whatever it is that he's gonna do for that day and keep the calorie expenditure as low as possible. Uh, next up, we've got Wyatt. Uh, so his arm very clearly was swelling, the wound not not looking that great. We hear him tell the story about having a chunk of glass being stuck in his leg for three years. And then shortly after, he pulls out a chunk of wood from his arm that has been lodged in there for two weeks. You know, that probably felt like a huge relief getting that out, but... You have to think that that's, that's done some damage or infection inside that arm. Uh, if he also pulled out a piece that was twice that, twice that length already, that was a lot of, that wood was in there deep. So, you know, did he get it all? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know if that's the end of the arm story for Wyatt. Um, moving on. You know, we did see him eat some mystery mushrooms, which he later decided were good. I guess his strategy was kind of cook the mushroom and then walk around with it under your tongue for half an hour. And if you're still alive, then it's good. Uh, I guess that is a, a strategy. We do see him spotting some grouse and squirrel tracks and then later on nails a grouse and immediately after nails another. Uh, so... Two, two more grouse to add to, to the food stash of Wyatt. I have to believe that he just has significantly more food than the other contestants at this point. Uh, yeah, maybe his calorie expenditure is a little bit higher, but he's he just, just feels like he's caught and killed so much more, uh, so many more animals than anyone else at this point that that arm has to be the final determining factor of just how far he's going to make it this season. You know, if he can get past the wound in his arm, he's probably going to win this season. And one little thing that he said that really stuck out to me was, uh, you know, that he came, he came out there with the intention of fishing. And, you know, that's what you probably should have done this season, you know, I think most of the contestants were just dropped on islands in Reindeer Lake. And that's not to say there's not going to be any game on, on an island. But I think that you lower those chances a little bit being stuck on an island in a lake, you know, from being able to do that big game hunting, which too many of the contestants this season seem to be a little bit hung up on. Uh, the lakes right there, it's an isolated lake. There's got to be tons and tons of fish in, fish in there. I know other lakes in that region that are equally isolated that are, you know, like you drop a hook in and you, it doesn't even matter what lure or what you got on there, you immediately have a fish on. So, you know, I liked hearing that. You know, fishing was the game this season, in my opinion. And, uh, Barring that arm, Wyatt should win. Lastly, we've got Mikey. This was a terrible episode for Mikey. I, every time he was on on the screen, I just wanted him off the screen. You know, he starts talking about how may, he thinks maybe everybody will be tapped out by day 50 and he can win and go home for his son's birthday. And day 50? Day 50, like in a location like this, like you're not... Like, this isn't, like, the most, uh, like, weather-wise isolated location that they've had. I have to think that when they did the seasons at, at Slave Lake, at Great Slave Lake, that that was way more isolated, uh, way colder, way worse. You know, we're, like, just getting down to, like, freezing temperatures now at day 40. Like, we're not in the push, the final push here yet, Mikey. It's not it's not over at day 50, you know, sure there's three contestants left But if you think both Alan and Wyatt are tapping out voluntarily by day 50 uh, You're you're just dead wrong um, 
feels like at this point Mikey's just hanging out and making trinkets and you know I'm glad that he's having fun out there with his arts and crafts but please just switch my program back to a contestant who's actually doing something in the game you know it feels like Mikey just hasn't really procured that much food this season you know there has been some food that he has got that we were not shown but he has to have the lowest amount of stores of our final three he seems to be just doing non-survival things most of the day and you know maybe that's just how it's being edited but uh you know for me he's the th he's third place He's third place out of these three, and it, this is between Allen and Wyatt. And, I mean, sure, Wyatt could get pulled for a medical, and maybe that gives Mikey a chance, but I just I just don't see it. I just doesn't feel like he's, he's playing the same game as Allen and Wyatt. And uh, I'm just going to throw out right now that uh, our two Canadians are going to be the final two this season. Uh, at Reindeer Lake and uh, yeah let's wrap things up there for the night very much looking forward to the final two episodes just to see how things actually end up playing out but as always everybody thank you so much for watching and I'm out